Hi, and welcome back. So time for my quarterly update, this time for August, September, and October of 2023. That also marks the 54 month point of this now longevity experiment. Uh, I'll go through all my subjective and objective stats, and I'll also show you the results and the data all the way back to 2019, and then you can compare as well. That's it, let's jump in. So let's very quickly go through my supplement stack, 1.5 grams of NMN per day. I've stopped taking the dried parsley. If you know, I got given an NAD test by Do Not Age. I'm gonna take that very soon. Um, dried parsley is high in apigenin, which, um, which inhibits CD38, which allows your NAD levels to raise even more. So I've stopped taking that. So I'm just gonna get my NAD levels tested on taking 1.5 grams of NMN a day. 1.5 grams of trans resveratrol. Again, I only take that on the days that I don't weight train. So that's Tuesday, Thursday, and a Saturday. Um, 1,000 milligrams of metformin, 500 in the morning and 500 just before night. 1.5 grams of TMG, trimethylglycine. 5,000 international units of vitamin D3. Uh, I used to take 10,000 twice a week, but my last blood test showed that I was right up in the sufficient range, bordering on getting close to toxic. So I'm back down to 5,000 a day and we'll see how that works out at the next blood test. 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, and that's the MK7 version. 250 milligrams of magnesium, and that's the L3 and 8 version. 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid. 2.4 grams of fisetin on the first, second, and third of each month. 2.4 grams of quercetin on the first, second, and third of each month. And if you want to know why I take the bigger dose once a month as opposed to a maintenance dose, a lower dose every day, there is a video that explains the reasons why in the list of my supplements in the description of the YouTube video. Uh, six activator, 400 milligrams a day. DIM, 600 milligrams per day. And uh, Glynac or Glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams a day. Now I take the majority of my supplements between 6.30 and seven in the morning when I wake up. My DIM is split into three separate doses, 200 in the morning when I wake up. 200 between 11 and 12. Uh, if I'm going to be out in the afternoon, then I may uh, take it later in the afternoon, maybe two or three. And then the last dose with my second dose of 500 milligrams of metformin, 9.45, 10, 15, just when I'm, I'm getting into bed, it's the last thing I do. Um, and as I said, I take my resveratrol with full fat yogurt or high fat yogurt around 8 p.m. at night. So that's it for the supplements I take. So let's take a look at diet and fasting. First of all, fasting, you'll know that during the week I practice 16-8, so I finish eating at 8 p.m. at night and I don't normally eat then until noon the next day. That's during the week. Uh, on the weekend, 8 p.m. till noon is, is normally what I do, unless we're out and about um, early in the morning and we're having a, a breakfast out, I might eat a little bit earlier. And in the same way, if I'm busy working, doing some research uh, on the computer, I may look at my watch and all of a sudden it's, it's two in the afternoon. So um, eight till noon, but sometimes a little before, sometimes a little bit after. You may also know that I'm practicing OMAD one meal a day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What does that look like? Well, on a Sunday, I will finish eating at, at 8 p.m. as normal. Uh, and then the next day, I won't start to eat until 6.30, maybe seven o'clock at night. Um, I did try to do a full 24 hours. What I tended to find then was that if I was eating at eight until nine and then going to bed at 10, it was a little bit uncomfortable. So. Uh, it's a 22, 23 hour fast, uh, and I give myself a two hour eating window. For diet, so there's no breakfast. So for lunch, um, if I'm gonna break my fast at noon, it's usually nuts, sometimes a shake, a lot less shakes than I had in the Middle East because we get um, freshly roasted, locally grown peanuts here, which is, uh, and I add um, Himalayan, milk, uh, Himalayan rock salt to that. If I'm then going to snack during the rest of the day, snacks technically um, to fend off hunger is going to be coffee, tea and water. And I, sometimes I'll put some heavy cream into the coffee. Dinner um, is chicken, eggs, beef burger and eggs, sometimes a cheeseburger. We've actually found somewhere now where we can get good um, ribeye steak. Uh, and it's actually cheaper than it was in the Middle East, which is strange, although it's Australian. so not so far to come. Um, so steak on the, the barbecue. I have got to be careful that I don't start eating too much steak because remember before 
that when I was um, supplement with creatine pushed up my creatinine levels, which which played havoc with my biological age. Um, sometimes vegetables, they're hard to come by here. The, the kind of the cruciferous vegetables are like uh, if we do find a packet in the frozen food section, in the supermarket will buy it and I will steam it. Um, but that really is once, twice a fortnight, maybe. So if you don't know what a fortnight is every two weeks. So, so in a month, maybe two or three times in a month. That's as opposed to nearly every day when I was in the Middle East. Alcohol, wine and beer, still one or two drinks only on the weekend, either a Friday or a Saturday night. Um, that's it for my diet and my fasting regime. So for the last three months, my overall feeling with regard to energy has remained high and steady. Um, you may be able to detect a small hoarseness in my voice. I'll cover that in more detail when I go through sickness in the next slide. Uh, this is the second time this has happened in the last three months. It only lasts about maybe three or four days. Um, I'll also mention it briefly when I talk about my uh, objective stats when I come to my um, resting heart rate. So that's it for my overall feeling and energy for the last three months. So other areas of my overall feeling, napping, I'm not doing any napping. Um, as you may know, my sleep scores, if you are subscribed, my sleep scores are posted occasionally on the community tab just to show you how I'm sleeping. Uh, motivation, no changes to my motivation. That remains high and steady. Um, you may notice as well, now that I've got more time on my hands, I've upped the amount of posts that I'm doing. I'm watching more videos. Um, and I'm learning how to turn big videos into shorts and how to add um, subtitles and stuff like that. So my motivation is high and I'm doing more with the spare time that I've got now that I'm not working from seven till uh, three in the day. Gym performance, um, no CrossFit here in the Philippines. So the only gym I can go to, which is about 15 minutes drive up the road, and it's actually on the way back from dropping the kids off, is very basic. I may do a few exercise videos just to show you what I can do and what I do do here uh, in the Philippines. That wasn't really possible in Abu Dhabi. They've got some strange rules about videotaping in public places just in case other people get in the video who haven't had permission to tape. So I, I will start to do those uh, in the near future. Um, so it's weight training on a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday. And then you may know again if you've watched uh, videos before that I do ruck runs on a Tuesday and a Thursday and they last somewhere between 40 and 45 minutes. I think I will do a ruck run video as well uh, and I'll jump on the Google Maps and I'll work out how far I run in that 40 to 45 minutes. And again, if you subscribed on the days that I ruck run, I'll, I'll try and remember to stick one up. Uh, I do post my heart rate um, statistics just to show you um, what aerobic, anaerobic and what VO2 max um, brackets I'm hitting on my ruck runs. Injuries, no injuries. My shoulder, remember, I used to have a problem with that. That's all fine. Um, I think also with there not being any CrossFit now, I'm doing a lot less dynamic movements. It's more back to the normal weight training. Um, so that's it for injuries. No injuries. Uh, everything's going well there. Sickness. So uh, you may be able to hear a hoarseness in my throat. This is the second time this has happened in the first um, in this three month period. The first time it happened, it lasted maybe four or five days. That was the in the first month. Today is Sunday. I'm going to edit this video and I'm going to upload it um, for Sunday night. Last Monday, sorry, last, yeah, last Monday, I went to the gym, no problems at all. When I went to bed, I, start, I felt an itch in my throat. Um, I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll see how I feel in the morning. Although I didn't feel bad, I felt fine. Um, it was definitely worse than it was the night before. So I didn't go for my ruck run because it was also raining. I didn't go for my ruck run on that Tuesday. I've actually taken all of this week off. No running, no gym. Um, my throat was quite sore and I was having to sort of um, clear my throat and there was a little bit of phlegm. It was white and not green. Uh, that's all gone away. If you watch the giveaway video, which I did on Friday, which was the one about asking the question about Guy Fawkes and Bonfire Night in the UK, you'll have noticed my throat was quite hoarse as well, but it's getting better every day. Regardless of how my throat feels tomorrow, which is Monday, I'm going to start going to the gym again. Um, a couple of people have said that it's the latest version of the COVID um, virus going around. Or it may just be that the temperatures are dropping, although very slightly. Uh, it is getting colder during the day and colder at night. A lot of people I've seen around and about have got similar kind of 
um, throat problems that I've got. So um, that's it. For sickness, the only thing I've got, a bit of a sore throat, knocked me out for a week this time and about four or five days last time. So that's it for my overall feeling with other elements. So moving on, let's take a look at my more subjective stats for my 54 month update. First of all, we'll look at weight. So last month or the last three months ago, it was kilograms, 88.17 kilograms, 194.4 pounds. I'm now down 26.9. So I've lost uh, 1.27 kilograms. That's around 2.8 pounds since the last time. And that's down 5.1 kilograms, 11.2 pounds since the start. My BMI was 28.7 three months ago. It's now 28.3. So that's down 0 0.4 since the start down 1.7 since I started. As you know, I don't hold much um, weight against BMI as a standard uh, for individuals. That is uh, we look into populations. It can be uh, it can be helpful because if you have any amount of muscle mass, BMI is going to measure fat and muscle mass in exactly the same way. And having a lot of muscle mass is going to go in your favor with regard to all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease and having uh, a larger amount of fat, even though BMI will measure it the same way, uh, is going to go against you. So that's one of the reasons why. We'll talk about one of the metrics I do like when we come on to my waist size in just a second. Percentage body fat was 25% three months ago. It's now 24.5. So I'm down 0.5% body fat, which is good. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I want to be going. And it's down 2% since I started using the new scale. That was back in April 20. So Although it's slow progress, it's progress in the right direction, which I'm extremely happy with. So moving on to muscle mass, you can see it was 33.9%. It's now 34.2. So up 0.3% since the last check and up 07 since the start, which is good because lean muscle mass is something that I want to maintain, even though I am gradually losing weight as the, uh, as the weeks and the months roll on. My basal metabolic rate was 1799. It's now 1782, so down slightly. Um, this is going to drop down as your body weight drops because your body doesn't need to use enough en as much energy when you're resting. But obviously, the higher this number is, the better. Uh, visceral fat was 13. This time it is 13. I mentioned this before. This is extremely frustrating. It's It's been 13 now since July 2022, even though I'm losing uh, body weight and I'm losing fat mass as well. I I think this may be down to the accuracy. So this could be here in July 22, 30, uh, 13.99. And it could be all the way down here to 13.01, which would be great to see that as it changes. But all it's showing me is just the course number, the raw number of 13. So although it's good, it's slightly disappointing, really. So moving on to my waist, last time it was 35.5 inches. It's now down to 35. So down half an inch in three months, which is OK, it's not fantastic, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. I've done a little bit of um, research. It's all um, anecdotal or, or um, epidemiological. They say that people in their late 40s, in their 50s and in their 60s tend to put on one inch around their waist, the men. Um, as the years roll on. So I started this in 2019, so four years ago. Um, if I'd been following that, I would now have a 43 inch waist, whereas I'm going the other way. I've gone from 39 down to 35. So again, it's small progress, but it's progress in the right direction, which I like. Um, although I do really appreciate the comments in the comment section, I do read them all. Um, I can't act on all of them because some tell me to do one thing and some tell me to do the other. Uh, and then there's the general idea, which I pick up from people like Rhonda Patrick and Andrew Huberman. Um, people saying go on a, on a raw fruit vegan diet for three months and you lose loads of weight. That's great. That's not really the aim of this. It is gradual weight loss and also gradual loss of body fat. Um, what I find is that the the regime, the way I'm eating now as a lifestyle, as opposed to just a, a, a diet for a short period of time is sustainable. So I'm going to carry on eating and exercising the way I am and hopefully keep moving in the right direction, as opposed to doing something quite drastic to lose weight and then yo-yo that back on three or four months later, because that kind of lifestyle is um, is not sustainable. So let's move on to my sleep. Definitely one of the most important matrix of longevity, one of the pillars of longevity. Uh, I've started here 
in November 19, which is when I started using the, the wristband. I will scroll down slowly so you can stop and pause and check my progress if you like. So that's the second tranche if you like. And then down to where we are now. So for this quarter, you can see August, my average overall sleep was seven hours 44, which I'm very happy with. Light sleep, four hours 57. My deep sleep average for that month was one hour 34, which I'm very happy with. And my average REM sleep was one hour 12. Again, very happy with that. In September, average uh, overall was seven hours 29. So that's good because I want to just be over seven hours. Between seven and eight hours, they reckon is optimal. My light sleep for September was four hours 55. Deep sleep was one hour 34 again, which is great. And my uh, REM or my REM sleep was exactly one hour as an average for September. For October, my average overall was seven hours 29. So again, that's good between seven and eight hours, which is what I'm looking at. Light, out, light sleep was four hours and 54. My average deep was one hour and 28, and my average REM was one hour and six. So the key ones I'm looking for here is, be, is being between seven and eight hours sleep per night. Uh, my deep sleep being as much as possible, uh, and over an hour is good. Um, so over an hour and a half is good. And my REM sleep when I started was a little bit low. You can see here it was 46 minutes or it was 59 minutes, and then hovering around the one hour for the last uh, nine months, which is great because I think you may have watched the video I did about REM sleep where everyone focuses on deep sleep because REM sleep was just a way of putting your thoughts back together. But actually there is a there is a rejuvenation period that goes on during REM sleep as well. So you need to get between seven and eight. You need to get as much deep and as much REM sleep as possible. So that's it for my uh, sleep stats for the last quarter. So moving on, my rest and heart rate, you can see here, I was, um, I've been recording this since May 20. I'll scroll down again slowly so you can check it out. If you want, you can pause the video at any time. Uh, and then into this last quarter, you can see here the rest in heart rate for this quarter. August, the rest in heart rate was 60.25 average. September, the average was 61.25. October, down to 57. Um, and in October, I will stick up the screenshot. If you are subscribed, you'll have seen this in the community tab. Rest in heart rate of 53, which is the lowest I've ever had. Uh, and 53 for my, for my age range would have me in the athlete bracket. Uh, overall, for the quarter, you can see my um, average is 59.5, which using this chart for my age group between 56 and 65 still has me in the excellent bracket. So I'm very happy with that with regards to resting heart rate. So let's move on to my grip strength. You'll see the one for July is highlighted in yellow. You may remember I couldn't do it in July because the, the dynamometer that I used was uh, in transit from the Middle East to the Philippines. Um, so as soon as it arrived, I did the test. So it was a couple of weeks late. Uh, so that is, it went from 97.8 to 97.5 for my left hand, and from 110.8 to 109.3 for my right hand. I checked it again at the beginning of October, and it's dropped down from 97.5 to 97, and down from uh, 109.3 to 108.2. Now, I think the reason for this is because I'm not doing CrossFit anymore. Um, many of the exercises in CrossFit have you gripping weights and moving them through space and time. There's also an awful lot of grip strength required when you do the um, gymnastics thing. So hanging on the bar, I can't do toes to bar. Um, I can't do chest to bar. But when you do when you do the variations of that, trying to learn to get to those two things, it's an awful lot of grip strength. And when I was going to the gym on the Friday and doing weight training exercises, not CrossFit as such, I would squat for the first 15 or 20 minutes, practice front squat and back squat. But tied into that, I would then go and hang on the bar for as long as I could. I think I had it up over a minute. Uh, I'd also then practice doing toes to bar uh, and trying to do chest to bar as well. That's now stopped because in the gym I'm going to, and I say I'll do a video about the equipment that's there, that doesn't exist. I'm tr probably going to get um, someone to put a bar up in the carport, uh, and I'm going to start practicing that again because I've shown a couple of um, studies that show grip, st grip strength and the lack of grip strength as you get older um, is correlated to 
an increase in cardiovascular disease and all cause mortality as well. So grip strength is something that I really do think is important and something I want to keep going. Uh, moving on to my steps. So steps for the quarter in August, 4,958. And you know my target's 5,000 because the studies I um, have looked at, although they say everyone thinks 10,000 a day is the target, and it is a good target to have, Although they're epidemiological, most of the um, studies I've come out with talk about the sweet spot being between 3,000 and 5,000 a day um, for increases in longevity and all-cause mortality reduction. So I set mine at 5,000 a day. Um, 4,958, so I fell short in August. September, 4,839, so fell short again. In October, 5,000. 221 so for the quarter that works out at 5006 so only just over for the quarter um there was definitely two days there when i didn't do my ruck runs because of the um the, the sore throat i had and again i didn't do two ruck runs in october be because of that and normally when i do the ruck runs i've hit my 5000 target by about 10 o'clock in the morning so it's usually well up there um, that's something that I'm definitely going to put right in the next quarter um, to try and get my my step count up. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I think looking at the results, all moving in the right direction, even though it's slowly, some of you may say ever so slowly, but it is going in the right direction. It's not standing still, but the best of all, it's not going backwards, which, as I mentioned, people tend to put on weight, uh, weight per year and also an inch around their waist as they go and I'm actually going backwards which is what I want to be doing I think it's good that I'm maintaining gaining even a little bit of muscle mass every time I do these checks while still losing weight losing circumference around my waist but also losing body fat as well and as I said there are people who told me to go on extreme diets to, to knock these numbers right down but then I'm going to have to go back to a sustainable lifestyle which is not going on a full raw vegan diet or or just going water fasting for 30 days i have to go back to what this i have to go back to something that is sustainable which this is um i wouldn't say i get questions in the comment section but people make statements such as especially in these videos and also in my biological age test videos which is if i just ate a healthy diet and I exercised the way i did now i would be getting much the same results and i would have a much healthier bank balance too um everyone's entitled to their opinion but the only person who knows how I feel and how I feel when I perform in the gym and generally um, is me. I know that when I started the experiment back when I was uh, 55, leading up to that, my diet was what it is, much, much the same as it is now. My exercise regime was much the same as it is now. And I was either plateauing or I was still gaining weight uh, and feeling more and more unhealthy. Whereas once I started the supplements, that did start to change. That could have been the placebo effect. But I know for a fact that when I went from 1 to 1.5 grams of NMN a day, my strength, my endurance and my recovery in the gym changed massively. I know that um, added to that was also my motivation. So I saw changes in strength. I saw changes in my endurance and I saw improvements in my recovery. And that motivated me to, to go on even stronger. If... If it had just been the case that I could have done that naturally, why didn't I do that when I was 49, 50, 51, 52? I tried to do it, but no matter what I did, I either plateaued or, as I said, I started to slip backwards. But once I'd gone to 1.5 milligram of 1.5 grams of NMN per day, I saw the changes and they were massive. Now, some people could say that's the placebo effect, which, again, yes, it could be. And I think at the beginning, there probably was an element of that, but it's not a scientific trial. But do you know of a scientific trial that's lasted four and a half years? I don't. And if it is a scientific trial and there is a placebo group, has that placebo group got the same um, effects or even better effects than the control group? Because if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, five years or four and a half years on from when I started at 55, I've seen when I was in the EU, my, my, un, um, my unofficial control group, they were all sliding down the slope that I was also on before I started this specific regime. So those skeptics, I'd say, in the comment section that say, if I just exercised the way I should, the way I am now, and I ate and slept correctly, I could save myself a lot of money by not spending money on all these supplements. I don't think that's true. 
I know for a fact that when I went to 1.5 grams of NMM per day, my endurance, my strength, my recovery and my motivation as a side element of that improved massively and spurred me on to do um, what I'm doing now. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd be interested to see what your comments are on this latest update.